speaker for having given me the first bite of the cherry. Mr. Speaker, let me start by saying that, uh, of course, this bill is obviously uh, a response or a reaction to the now very famous High Court ruling of November 2023. So we must thank our court for having jolted the executive to do what they should have done at the first instance. But we must also take cognizance of the fact that even as we debate this bill, the matter is still live in court. It is still lying in the, in the, in the Court of Appeal, pending determination. Uh, that notwithstanding, let me make the following comments. That if you look at the, if you look at the, the bill, the introduction to the bill itself, it states categorically that this is an act, that a bill for an act of parliament to give effect to Article 43.1b of the Constitution to provide a framework for access to affordable housing and for connected purposes. The speaker, from the outset, the question one would want to ask, and to ask repeatedly, how, how on earth, is this bill once, if, it's a, if it is passed and it becomes law, how? Is it going to contribute to the realization of the right under Article 43.1b of the Constitution? Mr. Speaker, it might be important for me to just read the Article 43.1b for the benefit of members who may not have their Constitution with them, the copies of the Constitution with them. Mr. Speaker, at Article 43.1b, the Constitution requires or dictates that every person has the right to accessible and adequate housing. Every person has the right to accessible and adequate housing and to reasonable standards of sanitation. And if you want to understand clearly how this bill is not, is not solving the problem, is not addressing the matter of the realization of the right under Article 43, 1B. You simply go to the paragraph on, at page 21, 26 of the bill itself. The paragraph dealing with eligibility criteria and application procedure for affordable housing unit. But before I go there, let me now thank the authors of this bill. I wish you could allow Honorable Chung to listen to me. Let me thank the authors of this bill for having come out now clearly that unlike what we are being told, unlike what was being sold to us through the now infamous finance bill 2023, that it is now clear in this bill that whoever is going to contribute to this fund, this housing levy, is not guaranteed a house. That is now clear. That however much you contribute towards the housing levy, whether you are a salaried employee, you are a, you are a Kali artisan, you are a Kukuteni pusher, you are a Boda Boda rider, you are a Mamamboga, there is no guarantee that you will get a house that your contributions are not a guarantee that you will get a house. That's now clear. And if you want to confirm that, you go to the paragraph, paragraph four, on eligibility criteria and application procedure for affordable housing unit. A person qualifies to be allocated an affordable house unit if that person is a Kenyan citizen who is at least 18 years of age and holds a Kenyan identity card. And it goes on. 
But what is more curious is at paragraph 31, 2, A. An application made under subsection 1 shall be accompanied by proof of requisite deposit approved by the relevant agency of at least 10% of the value of the affordable housing needs being applied for. Now, tell me now. Tell me now. Who in Kenya is going to afford the 10% of the value of the affordable housing unit? Who? Who? What we are simply doing is to create opportunities for the people who are already properties, like you and me, people who are already wealthy, to be able to use proxies to deposit the 10% of the value of those units and acquire as many units as possible. How have we addressed the issue of access to housing under Article 43 1B? Tell me. I need to be educated. Tell me. How? How, Honorable Shunga, my good friend? How? I need to be educated. So, we are simply trying to respond to the queries, the very fundamental queries that were, that were, addressed, that were raised by the High Court. My submission is that this bill does not cure, does not cure the deficiencies that were apparent in the finance bill 2023. It does not cure. Mr. Speaker, you must also understand that in this country, even those people who may want decent houses to be able to move from their current dwellings, the shanties as we call them, may not be able to as a result of other competing needs for the little money that they have. So what then should have happened? And this is something we have said over and over. We have said as a Zimio over and over that we are not opposed to the issue of affordable housing. As a matter of fact, the issue of affordable housing was in our manifesto. The, the point of departure is the implementation. As a Zimio, we would have wanted to implement this policy by simply having parliament appropriate money from Kenyan taxpayers' money. Simply collect taxes in a normal manner and appropriate part of that money to go and construct the houses. No, you're not doing it. You are simply creating new taxes. You are simply creating new taxes you are marked for the housing units. What you are saying, what you are doing is simply overburdening Kenyans to create houses for the benefit of a few, of a few, of a few select, of a select few who are really rich and who have got houses in the first place. Mr. Speaker, you, you go to the implementation. They are saying they will deduct 1.5% of the gross salaries of the employees. Again, that is double taxation. Because already those employees are paying pay as you earn. Why can't you then even go to the net, 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 the net, the net, the net earnings? But more curiously, the employers are being compelled to match, match that 1.5%. But it goes, when, it goes, it, when it comes to those who are not salaried, those who are in the informal sector, who are going to be, or go again, charge this levy through a means, I don't know, because I haven't read the report. The report came out too late. I'm told the amendments are proposing how you will raise this money from those who are not earning salaries. It is not clear who will march for them. It's not clear. For the employees like us and you, at least our employer, the PSC, the speaker is here, uh, will, will march. <laughs> yes. But for the Mahamboga, who will march for the Mahamboga, Mr. Speaker? Who will march the contribution for the Boda Boda rider? Who? So we are having two different standards, which was raised by the High Court itself. And I'm being careful not to delve into the matters which are preventing through the court, because that would be totally subjudicial. 
Mr. Speaker, you can go on and on and on. The High Court raised the issue of Article 10, Sub Article 2 of the Constitution on national values, especially the matter of participation of the people. I've, been to, I've, I've heard my friend Johan Ngenu eloquently say that he went to Kisumu, he went to uh, Nakuru, he went to Garesa, and people were happy. People were welcoming them with the clubs and cheers <laughs> that they want houses. They were singing, Hosanna, Hosanna. <laughs> the houses have arrived, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I didn't see them also. In my own county of Ziaya, I didn't see them. I didn't see them, Mr. Speaker. In my own constituency of Ugonja, I didn't see them. So, how was this public participation conducted? To be able to satisfy the very rigorous requirements under Article 10, Sub Article 2 of the Constitution. How? And remember, there was also a court ruling earlier on the issue of public participation, when the court declared our public participation notice as unconstitutional. Okay? You need to learn law, some law, for you to understand that honorable uh, buyer, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it has not been demonstrated how this public participation was effective. Okay? Finally, Mr. Speaker, because I want to leave the space for my colleagues to also contribute. Let me say this. And I want to repeat that the affordable housing policy could be a good idea. But we seem to be in a hurry. We, are, we seem to be in so much in a hurry to have it implemented. And you've heard the sentiments being expressed out there by those in the executive. That he to tafanya mpende musipende. That language, Mr. Speaker, is very dangerous. Especially on a matter which is affecting Kenyan people's pockets. Now we are being told that those hapless traders in Gekomba, in, in Mariakani, in, what do you call it, in Ritini, this place, yes. Yes, in Kongoya, in Kongoya, in where else? In Chomoroni, in Ugunja, in Chwele, in Nyando, in Kabuchai, in wherever, in Mwingi, are now going to be followed by KRA. As at the, the moment this bill passes and it is assented to and it becomes an act of parliament, those people I have mentioned, the border borders, the Mambogas, and the, the border border riders, must be prepared that KRA will be after them to be able to get out the 1.5% of their earnings. How they'll compute that, I don't know. I don't know for sure. How we will compute the earnings of a Boda Boda rider <laughs> to be able to extract 1.5% is a miracle. Mr. Speaker, therefore, I have to grudgingly oppose this bill. I have to grudgingly oppose it. Thank you. Manduku. Daniel Manduku. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From the onset, Mr.